Um, anyway, so welcome to Looking Under the Bed. Uh, I am Nicola and I use they, them pronouns. And my guest is... Shayna and I use she, her pronouns. Oh, thanks. Um, so the things we're going to be discussing today, well, the gist of this podcast is I go uh, and interview people, well, get them to come onto a, my podcast and I get them to bring a monster or a creature and they basically tell me about it and how to vanquish it and then how they themselves would vanquish it. And then I also bring something. So at the end of this, I should be uh, imparting a lot of knowledge, but also learning a lot of stuff that will probably be lodged into the back of my brain forever because it will be probably something I don't let go. <laughs> Just stuck there forever. Yeah. Um. So did you want me to go first or do you want to go first? I oh, know. I don't mind going first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. So go. you're gonna prompt me, or yeah. So what <laughs> what creature or thing did you bring us uh, today? Cool. So today I'm bringing the mimic with us. So basically the D and D version of a mimic. So you get different types of mimics depending on which culture you're looking at. Mm. Um, so some of them would just be like creatures that would mimic your sounds that live mm. in your house, or generally they're creatures that live in the dark. Um, but today I'm looking at the D and D version of a mimic, yeah. and I guess the reason I brought a mimic today was because if you cast your mind back to the '90s, when I was a wee sprog, uh, <laughs> my mother introduced me to the Care Bears movie, which mm. came out in like 1985, which was a bit before my time. Uh, and in that uh, movie, there was a sort of sentient object uh that was a book that was a spirit that controlled the book that could sort of get others to do what they want so mm. it sort of forced this uh little boy to with the promise of giving him real magic yeah. to destroy the f the fun fair and destroy the bridge uh the rainbow bridge to care a lot and so that book just like scared the bejesus out of me um and so that's why i thought well a sentient object isn't as interesting as a mimic and mm -hmm. I feel like a mimic's one of those things you'll always find on like a dungeon crawl mm. and it's always like a bit surprising uh, when you do get one of those so that's why I brought that today. Yeah, uh, you you sending me the clip of the Care Bear movie, first of all did not realise the Care Bears had a movie and then yeah just how dark this movie was that you watched as a kid. <laughs> I know and then like I used to, I remember watching it as a child and being like covering my eyes over when the book was around because mm. her face just freaked me out so much because yeah. it's got like this green face. But you can check out the the trailer and the clips of the the spirit book on uh, YouTube. It's mm. pretty interesting. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I the few times I've come across uh, a mimic in Dungeons and Dragons, it hasn't been great. Like it's always yeah, it's always surprising, or they're always like not what you expect. Yeah, and you're always like, ooh, treasure, like, yes, because you're doing a dungeon crawl, so you're expecting to find stuff, and then it's mm -hmm. like, oh, no, it's this thing that's stuck to me and beating me to death, so, <laughs> you know, not so great, um, but it's always a fun experience when that does happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you want to explain kind of, like, what a mimic is and kind of any, like, lore or stories or anything like that? Yeah, so uh, pretty much like a mimic usually would be like a chest or maybe a doorway in, in a dungeon in terms of D&D. &D. Um, so if we look at the monster manual, uh, they're shape-shifting predators. Mm. So pretty much they can change. They've only got certain materials they can generally turn into. So generally you'd find them as a chest. So let's just go with a chest example. Um, and so pretty much they just... Uh, you get two different types. So you get the one type that sort of just like sits around and waits for an unsuspecting victim. Yeah. And then you get the other type that sort of is a hunter and that'll hunt people down. And, and sometimes it'll share its feeding ground with others. I guess the lore around them, which came out. So the the original Mimic came out in the first Monster Manual mm. um, with D&D. &D, so the first, first edition. Um, and then after that, uh, there was another book that sort of went back into the lore um and so basically mimics were created by wizards mm. so which makes sense right so if a wizard wanted to keep something hidden in their little chest they would obviously create something yeah. that would protect whatever's in the chest 
Um, and so they've they've evolved quite a bit over time. So um, they used to be able to like have, or some of them still can have conversations. So mm. like in common and under common. Um, and then some of them, depending on their intelligence, might be able to bargain with you or that sort of thing, which makes it, I think, a bit more interesting than the, you know, fifth edition mimic, which is just like, it just beats you with its little pseudopods or yeah. whatever. Um, so I like that idea more. Um, and so I was thinking about like, oh, what are, what are other versions outside of D&D mm. that sort of are mimics? And yeah. I was thinking, oh, the luggage from Discworld. Mm. So... You know, it's a wizard's suitcase that's sort of like this being that has all these little legs that follows him around, which is pretty cool. So I think that's a pretty good version of a mimic. And then the other one that scared me as a child was the monster book of monsters in Harry Potter. Oh, yes, Like, especially in the movies when Mm. that thing's, like, jumping around and he has to jump off the bed and squish it. Yeah. Um, That could also be a mimic. So, Mm. you know, that's pretty cool. So uh, that's a bit of the lore. Um, Yeah. So, like, in ter- in terms of like your research, how would like how would you like vanquish or like dispel or disarm this thing? Like, what what is what does the research say? So, generally, uh, because they're dungeon dwellers, they don't like sunlight. Mm. So, you could thrust them into light, uh, maybe using a spell or something like that. Yeah. The other option, which I mean would work is using alcohol because they're quite sticky so yeah. the alcohol would sort of get them to stop sticking to you so basically if you think about a stick on a surface use some rubbing alcohol to get it to unstick from you which is like i can just imagine like this dwarf like carrying around like some whiskey or beer or something and like smashing it on this mimic to get it to let go of him <laughs> you know yeah. it would be pretty funny yeah that would be pretty funny yeah i'm just imagining you like getting half pissed as you're trying to like dose yourself and like yeah <laughs> the barrel of alcohol you're no doubt carrying. <laughs> yeah, it's like, mm. but I guess if you have a little bit of alcohol on you, yeah, um, it'll work. So, mm. yeah, so that's generally the best way. I mean, um, they are immune to acid mm. and being uh, knocked prone because mm. obviously, like, how are you going to knock a uh, chest prone? prone? Yeah, like, that's not going to work. Um, and they can also shape shift, so obviously, mm. they can use a turn and sh- polymorph. So. They could change into something else. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, being knocked prone, just I realize we're throwing around a lot of Dungeons and Dragons references, is basically just like knocking someone on their back and them not yeah. being able to move. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you think about like if it was a, a chest version, if you knocked it over, it could just polymorph on its next turn. It wouldn't yeah. It wouldn't be knocked prone and have to use an action to yeah, get up. Yeah, just so. shift into something else. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, and the way they attack you is they sort of stick themselves to you and club you with their little pseudopods, which are like these little, um, I don't know how you would explain that. Like, basically, are like, is it like that? Like this tongue thing they've got in there? Oh, yeah, it's kind of like a, like almost like a really long, like lizard tongue. Yeah. Yeah. And so it basically like smacks you with that. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, and it can bite you. Oh. Doesn't that sound fun? Yeah. It does it, sound fun. Can bite you. Yeah, but it's not too bad. So, yeah, imagine getting bitten by a chest. I mean, that's happened to me in D&D before. So, like, we were doing a dungeon crawl, and I was like, oh, yes, treasure. And then it was a mimic, and it, it beat me almost to death. <laughs> I mean, my character, not me specifically. <laughs> I don't go crawling around dungeons. It feels like you, though. <laughs> yeah, it feels like you. You take it very personally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I feel like it's one of those ones when you start out in D&D and you do your first dungeon call, your your dungeon master or game master would probably like put a mimic in there. Yeah, it's kind of something that I suppose you haven't really, like you don't really know about, I guess. Or it's like yeah. you're not expecting it like kind of like in Dungeons and Dragons, you're like, sweet, we've defeated this thing. Oh, there's this chest over here. I wonder what's in it. And then opening the chest and then it being this mimic thing and then it's like you're in a whole situation you didn't want to be in and in previous editions i think in the second and third edition maybe uh they could even take on the shape of like armor or weapons Mm. (laughs) so i think there's this whole generation of uh dungeons and dragons players who are like i'm not picking anything up ever yeah (laughs) just i'll be fine (laughs) could be a mimic yeah it could be a mimic it's gonna eat me (laughs) You like paper, scissors, rock it out. To yeah, that's true. That's item. true. Yeah, just get the dumbest person in your party to pick it up and yeah. then 
if it's fine, it's fine, and you can just get it off them mm-hmm. later. That's a that's a good way of getting around it. I mean, that's basically what happened to me. <laughs> they were like, ha ha, who's the newest one in the party has never played this game before? You open that chest. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it. Ah, oh, rogue. Yeah. You, you can lockpick. Like, open yeah. that chest for me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, but it's pretty fun. I think it's a, a great concept to use in, in literature and mm. movies and that sort of stuff. I um. There's a film I haven't seen, uh, which came out, I think, in the 90s sometime, called Mimic, which mm. is a Guillermo de Toro uh, movie. So that looks pretty good. So I was, like, doing this research. I'm like, oh, I actually want to watch that because I love his movies. So, mm. yeah, and then I've I've watched other stuff where, um, you know, these uh, haunted series mm. on Netflix. And there was a lady on there who lived with a mimic in her house and it completely freaked out. So basically it would, like, mimic her Mm. so um yeah that could be quite terrifying yeah that would be um so yeah it's just different types there yeah but yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't like that no can you imagine like you hear yourself yeah like or you think or if it's someone else like and then they're not actually there that would be even worse i think than hearing yourself i don't know i don't know i don't like either of those things yeah (laughs) i mean you know what I don't want to hear when I'm in the house by myself? Someone else in yeah, the house with that's me. that's true. That's true. It's like that old thing about hearing a baby crying, but you don't have any children. Mm. Like, that always creeps me out. It's like, yeah. no, I don't, yeah. Unless it's a cat, don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to borrow it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the mimics, that's, that's about it that I have on them. Um, mm. You know, they're a pretty simple creature, I guess. Mm. I mean... If kind I, of like their one focus is kind of food, right? Like yeah. getting food. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, if you were a wizard, how damn cool would it be to have your own mimic that you can sort of, a sort of like a bag of holding that mm. attacks people? Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Yeah. Especially in, um, yeah, the luggage on disc world. Like I haven't, um, Matt's read the books, but it's yeah. like, yeah, he's like explained this luggage to me, how it just like follows him around. It's got legs. I'm like, yeah, it's a bit creepy yeah that's so awesome i love yeah. the luggage it's just hilarious <laughs> but like everything pratchett does is hilarious yeah, and that's true i guess another part of it was that it was a useful tool in early gaming because mm. obviously you only had so much space yeah uh, to make your game so to make it interesting instead of having a character they would have to interact with in terms of talking and that sort of thing you sort of had this mimic and mm. would just attack them yeah uh, so that was quite a good way of sort of saving space in games early on yeah um and now it's just like really cool i mean you've got the famous versions Mm. um so yeah very nice and then how would you with your current resources and in your current body like defeat or vanquish or disarm a mimic so i guess uh so say now we're sitting here right now right so we're sitting in my living room and it turns out my ottoman has been replaced with a mimic, which I wouldn't put that past any of my friends. Um, <laughs> I've got a pretty well-stocked bar, mm. so I would probably, like, douse it in the cheapest alcohol I have. <laughs> I like how you go the cheapest Yeah, because I'm like, I'm not going to use my fancy whiskey <laughs> no. on this thing. Like, you're going to get the crummy $10 wine that I use for glue vine in the winter. That's what you're going to get. So I would, like, cover it in wine. Yeah. And then, or whatever cheap alcohol I have, mm. and then like chuck it out into the sunlight. And then oh, yeah. maybe once it's all like dried out, you could, you know, bury it in the garden or something. I don't know. I like how you're not even taking it elsewhere, it's just going in the garden. Yeah, well, I mean, like it could eat like weeds and stuff, I guess. I don't know. That's like, true. It's an amorphous shape, so, mm. but I guess it could shape shift back and come back in the house and then. Yeah, it could or be. Or could like eat one of my cats, which wouldn't be good. No, that's yeah. true. All the neighborhood cats would start going yeah. missing and it's because yeah. you've got this mimic in your garden. Yeah, that's yeah. probably not a good idea. So I probably <laughs> just like burn it, mm. I guess. Yeah, I guess that, I would, mean, that would make the most sense. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're immune or they're resistant to acid. Oh, they're immune to acid, actually. Uh, so you can just like cover them in acid and melt them down because they're no. sort of like this amorphous shape so even though they take on the shape of something else you would think acid would kill them mm. but no no acid Immune. won't do the job so it'll have to be good old fire or like chopping it i guess which i think is the way i defeated it the first time 
Oh, you just chopped it with your yeah, sword a lot. Yeah, so I just like hack at it with my sword. Yeah, I guess like if you had like an axe or something, can you like? Yeah, like well you have. Was... Yeah, you have a good weapon. Mm. I mean, they've got pretty good HP. Um, mm. so that's hit points. So that's basically how hard you have to smack them to kill mm. them if you haven't played D and D before. <laughs> uh, so they've got fifty-eight hit points, which is pretty high for a challenge too. I think. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I I just like the idea of like this Ottoman's turned into a mimic, and you're like, quick, grab, the, <laughs> grab, grab the, the cheap wine, <laughs> <laughs> grab the cheap wine. He'd probably be like, but I don't want to use the cheap wine on it, and just be like chucking it outside. Maybe oh, I can just yeah. imagine this like he wouldn't want to waste anything on it. So yeah, that's true. I could yeah. see um, you yeah, just having to like struggle and like yeah. be near death, and then it's like yeah, you you yeah. finally decide to use the alcohol. Yeah. And then through uh, sheer will, slowly chop this thing up while yeah. it's like shriveling. In I the mean, sunlight. we do have a barbecue, so that's true. Oh yeah, that's true. Once yeah. we chop it off, just chuck it on your barbecue. Yeah. Anyway. So that that could work, mm. but I guess yeah. Um. So yeah, that would be the way I would defeat a, a mimic. It's a pretty good way to defeat a mimic. Yeah. Yeah, I think, so. I think um some of the other monsters we're going to be going through. I feel well, like the Kalpi I've brought. You'll find out later, but it's a lot, um, a lot harder to deal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kelpies are pretty badass, eh? Yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe we should just dig into it. So yeah. a Kalpi, um, they appear as like majestic horses, uh, mainly in Scotland is where they mainly are, but next to rivers or lakes, and kind of like they lure unsuspecting humans. Because just imagine, you're in the olden times, you see this majestic stallion, and then it basically, I guess, seems somewhat tame, so they climb on its back, and then its skin is like slimy, so it's like almost acts as adhesive, so they get stuck, and then this cowpea just gallops into this, the water, the lake, the uh, river, and just drowns them, and then eats them. Yeah. yeah, so um, that sounds like a good time. <laughs> so yeah, they say that like they can also like transform into humans as well. So oh, there's okay. like cases about like them transforming into like human males and then like having relations with a oh wow uh, a female and then getting like real like the lady like realizes what it is and runs away but then it gets really possessive so Ah. basically starts like destroying all of the people around her until she eventually like has to give in and then like it drags her into the river and then they say that every now and again on a cold morning you can see like a white head like a female head with like just staring just like crocodiling like got the eyes popped out of the thing uh, oh, looking no. out at you. <laughs> I'd run away. I would run away. But yeah, they say that like Kelpies quite like kids. So like oh, they oh. can lure multiple kids onto their back. So they'll make their back oh, larger. That makes sense, yeah. So it says that they can like take up to like 20 kids, I think I read, and just like go up into the... <laughs> like kill a whole village load of kids. Yes, That's yeah. Right. Yeah, I think it is mainly... Um, I just like a lot of these uh, monsters like really to teach like lessons about like being careful when you're around water and stuff. But yeah, they were not, they're not nice at all really. Um, Also you're like, oh yeah, if you go to Scotland, don't go near any rivers or lakes apparently. Which is a bit odd because like, isn't that the whole reason you go to Scotland? I mean, like they have all the lochs. I mean, I've never been to Scotland, but I should imagine one day when I get to go there. Yes. You know, go say hi to Nessie and some Kelpies. Yeah. So there is like ways around it. So basically, yeah, Majestic Steed um, has like a slimy, so it looks fine, but I think it has like a slimy texture of like a fish, basically. Yeah. That yes makes it adhesive when you climb on top and then it just drags you under. Um, but kind of what the research said in terms of how to like dispel or just, um, there's no real vanquishing the cowpea. So nothing really kills it. But what you can do is 
you can put a bridle on it that mm. has a cross on it and you basically uh, yeah. tame it. I'm putting air quotes in the <laughs> air, team. Um, and it basically becomes like the most hardworking horse you've ever oh, imagined. That's pretty good. But... Oh, there's always a lot, isn't there? <laughs> you still have to feed it a person a day. To keep it mm, That tamed. sounds like a really good Supernatural episode. It does, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised I didn't see it on yeah. Supernatural. Yeah, so you can keep this horse and it will work like like a demon, like if you're working the fields or whatever, or it will like ride all day and all night. But you still have to feed it like a person every day. So I'm like, I'm not sure if the benefits really outweigh the disadvantages. I mean, it depends how much you like your neighbours, eh? That's true. Yeah. Like if you're, yeah... That is true, actually. Yeah. So, I mean, if you don't like your neighbors, you can just like, I mean, that would be a pretty good, like, if you think about the witch hunts they had in the US, mm. I mean, that was all about stealing land from women and it happened in Scotland as well. Mm. So if you didn't like your neighbors, you could just feed them to your culpi and then that's, take their land. I that's mean, true. It's a pretty good business model. Yeah. I was about to say, like, because... Back in those times, I feel like I definitely would have been burned as a witch. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, no doubt about it. I'm too strange. Like, it, there's <laughs> there's no way I'm coming out that not being on a stake somewhere. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, getting a cowpea and just, like, slowly feeding it to the neighbors that keep accusing me yeah. of being a witch would That's actually fine. work out all right. I yeah. mean, I feel like I wouldn't have that many qualms about it. Yeah. I mean, like, especially, you know, some of those dudes back then. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. But like patriarchy. Yeah. Um, so so what you can do though, so what they recommend for like travelers if you're traveling around the locks and rivers and stuff like that, is uh cowpeas can only live in moving water. So it means you can carry around still water, so you can like get like a little bottle or vial and fill it up with like puddle water, or you can take like I think it even says like fizzy drink. Yeah. fizzy water or like sparkling like, water yeah, or so something like some and iron brew yeah <laughs> or like i guess like beer or something as well like i guess if you're yeah taking some still water with you it will avoid you but don't have any barbecues or any or cook anything near the locks because apparently mm. then you're going to a tri- like the you carrying still water will outweigh they really right, want yeah. meat and they'll come out so, yeah, that's what they... So, like a carnivorous horse <laughs> creature. Yeah, basically. So, it's basically, I mean, if you think about it, it's like a crocodile. Yeah, like, kind of, yeah. yeah. I mean, crocodiles aren't slimy, but they do the same thing. Yes, they do do the same thing. I guess crocodiles don't, like, avidly go out, though, and, like, attract people onto their Yeah, back. that's true. You know, nobody's going to climb. I mean, unless you're Steve Irwin, rip, um, you're not going to be climbing on <laughs> a crocodile's back. No, so I think um, I think because they do look so majestic, it might like lure people in a lot more, especially kids as well, right? Like, yeah, I mean, if I was a kid and I saw this amazing horse, who's like, Ooh, I'm the best horse, look at me, come climb on my back, I'd be like, hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was one of those horsey girls. Yeah, me too. I mean, that's partly why I brought it yeah. today. Because <laughs> you're a horsey girl. Yeah, yeah, horsey, horsey person. <laughs> and um, I brought my childhood trauma. We'll bring something to the podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> childhood trauma, obsessions, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I thought this podcast would be quite fun. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, not too much things to, like, they didn't really go into from the research I did about how to, like, vanquish a cowpea, but it just sounded like it was more of, like, prevention. Yeah. Method <laughs> Prevention's better than cure, eh? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I guess the barbecue thing's interesting because, you know, they might be attracted by the smell of meat, which you don't really think about when you think horses. No, so but then, like... But it's not really horse. It's, yeah, and yeah. it also eats people, right? Yeah, so it'll be like, oh, yes... Imagine Someone's also like Barbie going. you're dragging in your person. You're eating that raw now. Yeah, it's like sushi. Yeah. yeah. Like I could imagine you smelling meat, cooked meat would be quite etch- quite nice. I that can't believe be I'm like good. sympathizing yeah. with the cowpea. But yeah, I like I I kind of get it. Like yeah. I think it's yeah. But in terms of how I personally would like dispel to some I think I'll just carry around 
a bottle of water. I'd probably get like a little like really cute vial of like puddle water, make it just wear it as a necklace and just not walk. have a barbecue. Not have a like no barbecues, like <laughs> literally just like a dry litmus bread. Yep, yeah. <laughs> We're being hobbits by the locks yeah. and rivers in Scotland. Yeah. yeah. And you're just, I guess, being very careful. And if you see a horse, don't just don't interact with it if it's just like yeah. chilling by the lake. <laughs> I feel like as an adult, you probably wouldn't because by the time you're an adult, you've either had a bad experience with a horse or you know better. I don't know. I would I would definitely still do uh, that. I no. mean, now I won't because... Now you know. Sh- it could be a cowpie. Yeah. But um, yeah, I would legit, I legit go up to horses all the time and say hello. <laughs> Oh no, I got bitten by a goat once, which is a story for another podcast, but I'm just like, I stay away from farm animals now. It's uh, like, no, not interested. Not interested. They're going to bite me. <laughs> um, yeah, any follow-on questions from a Kelpie? I guess like, so they're mostly in Scotland, right? So they yeah. would mostly be on the mainland. Mm. It would be interesting to know if they have them like out in the Outer Hebrides or like if there's different versions of the same thing in Europe, like a similar sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, I think there probably is. Like there's an, anything with moving water and there's yeah. usually like a monster or something around it that will drag mm. you in. So it's pro- there's probably, I don't go too much into elsewhere, but I mean... There's like, what, like sirens, like a tractor. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Sailors into the ocean and stuff. Because I'm like, oh, if it's just for, if it's for moving water. So in theory, cowpies would be yeah. in the sea. Yeah, technically, yeah. Yeah. Though that's mostly the area of a sulky, but they're they're not a threat. But we could probably talk about that another time. Yeah. <laughs> basically like a seal person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's pretty interesting that, like, they had... I guess it's probably one of those warning tales um, to kids when they were growing up in Scotland. Like, please go, don't touch the neighbor's horses. Yeah, and, like, don't go, like, just playing by a lake or, like, yeah. a moving river because, yeah. like... It's not safe. No, not safe. Like, I... Yeah, I've seen kids just, like, go under and yeah. it just... Yeah, yeah not it know. happens so quick. Yeah, whereas with a mimic, it's more like, ha... Huh, Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. The mimic's like, yeah, I have you now. Yeah. There's no like there's no cautionary tale no. in that. No. Well, I guess it could be in terms of like don't put your fingers where they're not supposed to go. Like Yeah, like don't go open other people's yeah. stuff. Yeah. Which I mean is a fair enough thing to say. Yeah, people. I mean it is a fair enough yeah. lesson. But you know, when you're in a dungeon <laughs> yeah. and you've like been working really hard and you see a sweet looking chest you got to be open in that exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah, you want your loot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that's us. So Cool. That was awesome. Thanks yeah. so much. I that's was great. really interested to hear more about kelpsy, kelpies because uh, they've got that beautiful statue of them in Scotland, mm. which is stunning. So I've always wanted like to know more about them. So it's yeah. been pretty good. No, thanks. And I've enjoyed hearing more about a mimic. And where they originate, I thought it was cool that they're like, came from sorcerers which yeah. makes complete sense yeah it does eh? yeah, yeah it's pretty cool mm. but yeah thanks right. for joining no, it's a pleasure all right uh did you want people to find you anywhere no online? i'm all good you're all good you're just gonna put you're just an interviewee and you're like yeah. no nah, i don't need to promote anything no nah, i don't need to promote anything um from me you can follow me on instagram at nick underscore nick uh it's my kind of my personal instagram but feel free to reach out if you have any ideas on monsters that i could do or if you want to be if you're in new zealand and you want to be a guest let me know because i'm portable baby (laughs) Uh, but thanks for listening and we'll see you next time bye